Welcome everyone to the Fender for Cloud in the field. For all of the, those of you that are coming back to the show, thank you very much. Uh, and for you that is watching this for the first time, thank you for joining the show. And make sure to subscribe to our playlist at Microsoft Security Channel. I'm going to put the AKA link below so you can put this on our favorites. Uh, subscribe, hit the bell to get notifications when new episodes are uploaded. Well, this episode is going to have um, someone that came to the show in the past to talk about some news around uh, Defender for Databases in general. He has some specifics that uh, I'm going to let him talk uh, about it, but I'd like to welcome back my friend, Kathleen Esenu. Kathleen, thank you very much for being on. Uh, thank you for having me again. It's always a pleasure and uh, an honor uh, to be on the show. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Kathleen. Uh, uh, it was, it was a, a long time ago that you've been on the show, so I'm really glad that you're back and with some good news. So um, tell us what you've been doing these days uh, at Microsoft. Uh, give him some, some update for people that don't know you. So um, sure. So I'm a product manager in the Defender for Cloud uh, PM group, uh, obviously, um, and we focus on protect protecting uh, uh, your data. I focus on database protection um, and uh, poster. So um, and that's uh, uh, what we're going to talk about today, um, and we're, we're going to talk specifically about our uh, recent investments in. Improving uh, the multi-cloud protection abilities for uh, open-source relational databases. This is a very is important subject for sure, because as part of our CNAP strategy, we've been investing a lot on the multi-cloud uh, scenario. So I'm very really glad that we are going to have some coverage when it comes to database and open source relational database for a multi-cloud environment. The first yeah. question is is more like an overview. What are we doing in this space in general? Sure. So um, we have various uh, the protection, uh, uh, the database protection puzzle. So let, let's just take a step back and, and, and look at, uh, at what we're protecting, right? Because um, we have a very rich um, set of abilities specifically for SQL Server and, and in various flavors, right? So um, we have uh, uh, SQL on pass, SQL on VMs, SQL on premises, SQL anywhere. Now, um, and when it comes to uh, uh, open source relational databases, so it's important to, uh, to note that um, we're talking about uh, MySQL, PostgreSQL, and, uh, and MariaDB, which have been uh, already supported in our uh, uh, Defender for uh, 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 Databases uh, bundle, right? Um, but uh, th there have been some, some recent changes that, that uh, uh, required us to increase uh, our coverage. And uh, uh, so, for example, in in the Azure database for Postgres, MySQL, and MariaDB area, uh, the the classic flavors, the, what's called as uh, single server uh, SKUs, uh, are being retired uh, even pretty soon. Right? MySQL is, is being retired. Uh, single server is being retired this year, and we saw that without the uh, having the uh, protection abilities of Defender for Cloud, customers were uh, really reluctant to to migrate to Defender uh, to uh, to, uh, to the uh, flexible server queue. So we we invested a lot in the past few months to to give full coverage uh, for all the flexible uh, uh, servers um, for open source relational databases, and we have all of the all of that area fully covered today on um, subscription level, uh, resource level, and we have with full parity on, uh, on on the alerts. And then we went into the uh, this uh, area where we didn't have threat protection coverage at all in um, uh, for AWS databases. Right? So 
um, there um, we have MySQL, Postgres, and MariaDB that that are uh, uh, that run on the the most uh, popular uh, database uh, service in, in AWS, which is uh, Amazon LDS, right? So we also added uh, coverage for those. That is now in public preview, available for anyone to play with, and uh, that also includes the very popular uh, Aurora, Postgres, and MySQL uh, services. So a lot of gr of great new stuff that uh, to that with uh, uh, this added these added abilities. Um, you can say we're the, the first uh, Synapse vendor to have multi-cloud database uh, threat protection um, under our, our belt. So, um, Yes, absolutely. The RDS, you mentioned RDS, uh, right now is in public preview, right? So by default, every time that we release a pro public preview feature, we don't really charge for that public preview feature. So is it the same thing with RDS? Right, uh, we don't uh, charge anything. Feel free to turn it on. Um, and we even uh, added uh, sensitive data discovery into this uh, bundle. So, you know, even if you did, didn't turn on Defender CSPM, um, we will have sensitive data discovery for uh, those RDS instances um, to give you additional value. Um, uh, free of charge in, in public preview. Wow, so they don't even need the fantasy SPM for that? As for specifically for uh, sensitive data discovery on LDS instances, that, that is, uh, we bundle that in, uh, in, in the plan so that, you know, if all you do is turn this on, so you, can, you still can uh, filter uh, your alerts and additional uh, experiences in, in MDC based on whether we, the, there is sensitive data in those uh, resources. That's super interesting. Is there any difference, uh, since we are talking about threat protection, is there any difference between the alerts that customers are very used to receive in the Azure environment versus the alerts that will pop up uh, from these AWS database? So, uh, great question. Uh, the answer is uh, no, because um, that's that's the the, the great uh, thing here, right? Um, uh, we added uh, this whole new functionality, which gives which uses the the same uh, taxonomy, the same alerts um, as uh, as customers uh, are accustomed to today. So, you don't really need to set up new rules um, or use new alert IDs. We use the existing ones, and all, all the value that you know and love, um, you just get it out of the box. Got it, got it. And, and how customers can access the data uh, for this plan outside of Azure? So uh, to access the data outside of Azure, um, so of course, uh, everything is, is available through Azure Resource Graph, right? Where um, um, so customers can query alerts, recommendations that were created. It's uh, it's exactly the same as you can do with any other um, uh, Defender for Cloud uh, uh, plan. Um, uh, only that you know the the source resources, uh, some of them exist in in AWS, but eventually you you can consume everything. Uh, using the same experiences that you already do. Well, let's uh, take a look at this. I, I think that you brought a demo to, to show us, right? Yeah. So uh, there are three building blocks to protecting your uh, multi-cloud open source relational databases. Right? So the first one would be uh, foundational CSPM. This is the, the basic uh, Defender plan that uh, for Azure is turned on by default for all the, the services in, in, in Azure. Uh, we will list them in our inventory, we will calculate, uh, we evaluate recommendations uh, if relevant, and we, you get the same experience when connecting your uh, AWS account or GCP accounts to, to MDC. So in this case, uh, I connected uh, this uh, AWS account and we can see that we have various um, resources listed here. Uh, S3 buckets, our RDS instance, EC2 instances, and when we click on um, on the RDS instance, we will see already some recommendations being evaluated, and this is uh, part of what you get with NTC for free. Um, 
not something new, but important for everyone to know that it's it's there already. Now, once you've onboarded uh, many uh, accounts with many resources, um, going over this uh, list of recommendations becomes kind of tedious, hard, and hard to focus, right? So that's where the, the next uh, piece of the uh, the next building block comes in, which is Defender CSPM, which will um, uh, assess various misconfigurations on the database itself and on resources that uh, that have any interactions with it and really give you an understanding of how um, your database is at risk and help you uh, remediate um, the, the most critical misconfigurations. Now, if our uh, viewers recall, uh, a few episodes ago, uh, Marianne was here and shared the data uh, security uh, dashboard, which is a great way to to see the the value of um, of protecting uh, data resource uh, resources as part of uh, Defender CSPM, and this is a great summary of everything. So here we can see, for example, that there are some high severity uh, attack pads on our resources. And this dashboard shows us all the data across all the clouds, I remind you. And here we will see that our uh, uh, favorite LDS instance has some attack pads on it. Now this attack pad um, talks about an LDS instance that's exposed to the internet. We can see that uh, any public IP can access it. It uses basic authentication. So if, if you use the, an easily guessable user and password, uh, someone may may, may uh, succeed in brute forcing it, and uh, if they do that, they will gain access to all of this uh, very precious sensitive data that we found um, uh, on on the database. Um, now, uh, what's very important <laughs> to to note is you you may you may ask yourself who leaves uh, their database exposed to the internet and. Uh, we see that for for uh, open source da relational databases, and this is part of the great motivation in ex in extending this uh, our uh, threat protection for for these resources. Uh, we see that um, there are around six million exposed Postgres and MySQL uh, servers ar around the world, you know, on premises, cloud, um, and th this number, if you look at it over time. It's just not not uh, on a negative trend, um, and, and so, so even though there is a lot of um, uh, a lot of discussions around data security and cybersecurity, there's a lot of education going on. Uh, that that is still you know the most basic misconfiguration is still a big issue. Um, so this is a classic one, um, and and here we can see uh, a few active alerts, which leads us to the. Uh, last uh, uh, piece of the uh, of the puzzle, which is the threat protection part, right? So, uh, um, and let's just get, go back to the configuration to make sure that uh, we know how to get there, to get that value. So, um, in Azure, when we go to the environment settings, we we'll go to the databases, and we see open source relational databases here. Um, with all the updates that we did, this will also re reflect all the uh, flexible server as uh, as well, right? And if you turn this uh, plan on before we added the uh, support for the new resources, um, this this just turned on for them when uh, when the feature went uh, GA. Okay, so you should be protected out of the box if you turn this on already. Now for uh, uh, a, a AWS, we changed uh, a few things here. So when you go into the connector page, go to the databases part, and under open source relational databases, you can turn this on or off. Uh, this means you will get the uh, alerts, and you can also opt in or out of sensitive data discovery. This is on by default, and it's a shared feature with Defender CSPM. So if I go and turn it off here, will be disabled in Defender CSPM as well for uh, RDS databases specifically. Okay, so just uh, make sure you don't uh, break someone else's configuration, right? But turning uh, turning it on or off here affects the other side and uh, and vice versa. 
then just go and make sure you finish reconfiguring the connector. And once we did that, we will get uh, alerts for our open source relational databases um, in, uh, in AWS as well. So here, if we go to the security alert page, we can see a myriad of brute force uh, attack attempts um, uh, against uh, SQLs uh, on VMs, uh, our uh, flexible Postgres servers, and also our RDS instances. And uh, as I said, the, the experience remains the same, the alert, the ID, um, all the, all the uh, enrichment that you get, right? the threat intelligence, if, if we detected something, you will see it here, and all the evidence, all the, the chain of events that led us to uh, um, assess that this is a, a brute force uh, attack, you, you will see them in here. Which uh, uh, let's agree is pretty cool. <laughs> Together with uh, the findings from sensitive data discovery, right, that, that you um, that enrich the experience here. Awesome. And last um, is is an important mention that we saw all of this in in uh, in the Defender for Cloud experience. All of these alerts for Azure and for uh, AWS will go into Defender XDR and you can uh, explore them here together and have um, uh, complex incidents correlated together um, easily. So this is very, very cool value, uh, which you know we, we expect our customers to use more and more. And Hey, Kathleen, that was a great demo. Thank you very much. Uh, some very cool features. I'm really glad to see again that we are investing in multi-cloud and bringing threat protection to different workloads. Uh, and database is a, is a huge one. So thank you for the hard work on this. Uh, thank you for uh, for the kind words. And, and uh, yeah, we, we want to meet our customers where, where they're at. And uh, open source relational databases are a very uh, important piece of um, every architecture uh, today. Uh, these are, you see them in enterprise uh, applications, which you, you didn't see them in the past. Uh, there was kind of a taboo to use uh, open source databases, but th that is no longer the case. So uh, it's very, very important to, uh, to protect them as well. And uh, um, so that's where we're at now. Yep. Uh, fully agree with you, my friend. Thank you very much again uh, for for joining the show and sharing those news. Appreciate. Thank you for having me. Uh, hope to be to come here again with uh, with more news um, in the near future. Absolutely. Thank you so much. All right, everyone. This is a wrap for today's episode. Uh, once again, make sure to subscribe to our playlist, the AK link below, and stay tuned. We have a lot more episodes to come. See you next time.